Hi friends and welcome to Paper Root Scrapbooking. I'm Nadine and today I'm going to be doing an album share with you. I'm going to go way back and show you one of my earliest albums and also one of my most recent. <laughs> Okay, so first of all, happy Canada Day. I did put Canada Day paper out in my intro and meant to say it there, but um, I think I forgot. So anyways, happy Canada Day to my fellow Canadians. Um, I'm super happy that this uh, pandemic school year has come to an end, and I'm really, really hoping and praying that my next uh, work year in the school will be much, um, much different than the one we just finished. So. I'm going into summer with a hopeful heart. Anyways, on to my video. I have um, a little bit of an explanation before I show you my uh, throwback album that I was going to show. And my explanation is about my um, photo organization process. So a couple of years ago, I decided that I was going to get all of my pre-digital photos into JPEG format. And so I started painstakingly organizing my photos. So um, even before that, something that had happened, my husband had gone into the closet to try to get down some, I think like gift wrap stuff, and he knocked my photo boxes off the shelf. And so any organization that I had done previous to that was gone. It, it, everything was just in a big pile. So. I went through all of my digital, all of my pre-digital photos. I put them um, in chronological order as best I could. I know that a lot of the photos had dates uh, printed on them, so um, the cameras at that time sometimes would print a date, so that was helpful. Um, also, I I kind of went from there. Um, you know, based on where we were living, how old the kids were, what activities we were doing, etc., etc. So I, I did the best I could. They are now in chronological order. I have tossed all the doubles. I have tossed all of the overexposed photos that were not. So I did toss the overexposed photos, but if it was the only photo I had of something that I felt was important to document, I kept it. But for the most part, if the photo was overexposed, it went in the garbage. I also tossed out photos of people who I did not recognize or know. So like there were some birthday party photos of my kids. I didn't know any of the kids in the photo. I didn't feel it was important to keep that. Same with um, my high school stuff. If I didn't know the people in the photo, I didn't keep it. Um, anyways, so I went from eight photo boxes like this down to three photo boxes like this. So that was quite the purge. It felt good and um, I highly encourage other people to do it. I did this through the 100 days project. I don't know if you guys are familiar that, with that. I will see if I can find it online and link it below. Um, and so for 100 days I sorted uh, photos, organized photos, put them in order. And then for another 100 days project, I think the following year, I scanned photos. So every day I scanned a minimum of 10 photos. I now have all of the photos from the photo boxes that I organized by year, scanned into my computer digitally and organized on my computer by year. And into folders in the way that I scrapbook. So I scrapbook by theme mostly, so all of the Christmas are in one folder, all of the Halloween are in one folder for that year, Easter, etc, etc. I have one folder for each kid, so if it's about that kid's school, if it's about that kid's sports, if it's about that kid's birthday, it goes in their own folder. And then I have general family photos that are organized by season. So I do winter, spring, and then I do summer, and then I do fall winter like fall slash winter so it kind of goes from about january to june and then from june to september is the summer ones and a lot of our photos are taken at that time because that's when we spend the most time together as a family um, and then 
September to December. So then that's all organized onto my computer as well. Now my next mission in this process, because believe it or not, it is still incomplete. <laughs> so I feel like I have a good handle on it, but I still have more to do. Um, so that is my photo box explanation and where I'm at in my photo organization journey. And here is my next project or pros part. Hmm, words are hard. Here's the next portion of that project that I'm hoping to complete. Sorry, I'm just putting that down on the floor. Is the albums that I made. So I had started scrapbooking in 1999. I didn't get a digital camera until about 2006. And so I have a lot of photos in my scrapbooks that don't didn't have doubles that need to be scanned into the computer and turned into JPEGs. So I started that process this year. I'm not doing it as a 100 day project. I'm just doing it when I feel like I can, when I have time. Time has been at a minimum this year. I don't know um, if it's because my youngest son is graduating or because I just got no energy because <laughs> I'm just not sure. Anyways, there's no consistency to it. Just whenever I feel like I have the time and the patience to do it, because it is a bit painstaking to pull each sheet out of the book and scan the photos. However, I am determined to complete this process and I don't know what will be next, but I'm sure there's more to it. I will keep you informed. So here is one of my very first fully scanned um, pre-digital scrapbook and this is my oldest son's first year scrapbook all of his first year photos fit into one album because I was a very young mom and photos develop photo developing and film were expensive and I couldn't really afford it so there are not a ton of photos of this time in my life so everything fits in here um, and I'm really happy to have them digitized so that I can share them. So this album will now come with me to Ontario and it will stay in his forever home now that he has a forever home and they can look back on it as their kids grow. So he, I put this into a um, Disney themed album, which I suppose was probably made for Disney trips, but you know, it seemed childlike. It's DF albums. Montreal, New York, Paris, Canada. I don't see a date, but it would have been in the early 2000s because I started scrapbooking in 99 and I did not do his album first. It came a little bit later. So here is my throwback Thursday album for you on this fine Thursday, Canada Day, July 1st. So this is the intro page. It was a pre-printed uh, eight and a half by 11 page. All of my early albums are in the eight and a half by 11 format. I found it more manageable. The page protectors were less expensive, etc. And this was a common size back at the time that I started scrapbooking. So um, uh, here we go. This was our first professional photo shoot. We didn't do newborn photos or anything. These are just like I think Sears photos do what you can afford right and I actually think my parents paid for that photo shoot um, these are the cards we got when he was a babe I was able to fit all of his cards into this album as well because like I said um, uh, photo developing and photo film were expensive so here is more cards. This is our baby shower back in the day. Um, my best friend had me a baby shower. This is her sweet little brother, isn't he a doll? He's such a good daddy now. He has some beautiful kids. Um, more. These are the cards we got from the baby shower. And I just put some stickers around them. It's nothing fancy. This whole album is really nothing fancy. So the process that I used to create this album was one that I read about in Simple Scrapbooks magazine where you take like a page format and you use it throughout your album, which creates visual consistency, but also just makes it go faster 
and help you to focus on getting your project completed. So all of my pages will have this, I think it's a two inch strip across the bottom. That's where my title goes. I think the majority of my titles were cut with that red Sizzix machine. I don't know if you guys have been around long enough to remember that, but it had like the um, arm that you pull and squish down the die and then the die pops your letter out. Anyway, that's what I used for the majority of my titles. It wasn't my own Sizzix machine. I believe it was my mom's. And uh, she had a few different alphas, so I enjoyed that. Speaking of my mom, isn't she beautiful? She was such a young grandma and she called herself granny, which used to crack me up. <laughs> because look how young she's, she's so beautiful and young and does not look like a granny. And people used to look at us funny when she'd be like, come to granny. So cute. Um, precious, precious photos of my son's godparents. Um, his godfather has since passed away. I miss him dearly. They were a very important part of my life at this age and stage. So here are all his baptismal cards. I use this interesting water paper. <laughs> where, where did I find these things? Um, here's the same pattern as you can see. And just like really basic pages, but not totally like there there are embellishments you know very basic stickers no clustering I did do journaling a lot of it is just like uh, like you know times dates places things that I remembered some of it's just random poetry that I found that kind of told how I feel I didn't feel super confident with my words back then so you know fun facts like where were we what were we doing um, you know his age that sort of thing um, see like this is cute too at great grandma and grandpa well of course he you know yeah back then I had grandparents <laughs> too my grandma's still around but she doesn't have her own place anymore so cute he just had the cutest little baby face and actually I think he looks quite a bit like his first which is the next album that I'll show you. So still following along with that same um, you know pattern. Little Grossman, this is Grossman stickers, remember those? That's how we made our page. Actually I had so many of these because I had three boys so I like, I don't know bought the roll. I don't know what I was doing. I have so many of them. I've still used them in Quentin's album too. Just hilarious. More poetry. Um, more of our first photo shoot because you know when you buy from Sears they give you a bajillion photos. I have since tossed some out. And learning to crawl. Crawling across mommy's neck because you know that's fun meeting Santa, his first Christmas, his first gift from Santa. This is our first home away from my family home, like away from my parents' home. The first place we lived in a basement. It wasn't even a suite. It was just we rented a couple of rooms and a bathroom downstairs in a family home and you shared the kitchen and laundry facilities with the family that lived there. Speaking of which, probably shouldn't have the address on there, not at the matters, these people don't live there anymore, but um, we lived at their place and they had three kids and so he was blessed to be able to play with all of their toys and whatnot because I didn't have a ton of that kind of thing for him and uh, he spent a lot of time with them. We did a lot of things together with their family, which was a really nice uh gentle break into <laughs> living on our own. Um, more about my cousins, my extended family. Um, just a little camera baby. His first Easter. The two of us. It was really just the two of us. This is my best friend Michelle. She has also since passed away so this is pretty precious too. Um, he actually named Brandon, my little guy, named his daughter 
her middle name is Michelle after this friend who was a big help to us. She passed away when Brandon was six, so I know his memories of her are few and far between, but I know that he, I've always made sure that he knew how, I don't think I could have made it through those early years of his life without her. She was very important to me. Messy babies. <laughs> his hair kills me. I loved his hair so much. His first birthday. And then at the back is just a family tree and I've just covered up the personal information, but it had my information and his uh, biological father's information over there. So that's it for his first year album. So this is all scanned and put into JPEG and organized into his, by year into my computer. And then this is my most recent completed album and it is for that guy's baby boy. So Quentin, who you've seen in probably most of my videos because I've been accused of favoritism by my family. <laughs> but really, I'm just trying to get through this project that I created for myself. So I have been using these um, 12 by 12 D-Ring Legacy albums by Close to My Heart. They are the sturdiest albums I can find on the market. And I've also been using their page protectors, which are the sturdiest I can find as well. And um, this particular album, so I think I might have mentioned this in earlier videos, but I have made an attempt to um, document his first year by going through all of my text messages with my daughter-in-law and printing all of the photos and the little captions that she wrote. And since I have kind of tried to combine some things and um, make it more than one day on a page because I, you know, it was getting to be quite elaborate. So I am trying to condense it, but kind of try to keep the same idea going. So for example, here I combined a bunch of shopping photos together and, you know, wrote a little thing about him going shopping with mommy as opposed to like each individual shopping experience, that sort of thing. So then I think you've seen a lot of these because I showed them in my April, May layout share and I'll link that below in case you haven't seen it yet. So I'll go through this pretty quickly, but um, one of the things I was doing when I was finishing this album is I was trying to use up all of the baby um, supplies that I had, baby boy supplies that I had left so I could create, switch it over to a baby girl iris container um, for my and some of the stuff just stayed in there because it can be used for boys or girls, but I really wanted to use up the stuff that I thought was boyish, so I did. And um, here's one of the things I've been talking about in my videos, using up your numbers on your um, thicker sheets. Um, this is another one that's a good example of how I took a bunch of just things that he was eating and then talked about how... Um, like what he's been eating that sort of thing but then like this was all the same day so it it's kind of a combination of those two formats just to to get through which is good um so yeah like i said you've seen it's like some of these i think this even has a process video with it so you've seen a lot of these already but i did i did end up using up all of the boy stuff and i was able to have an empty iris container which was super exciting for me of course it's full now of other stuff um but pretty exciting times to empty an iris container let me tell you and uh some of this stuff was pretty old but here's another one i used the these epoxy alphas they didn't have a lot of vowels in them so I just used them as like a border on this page and still using up those little baby icons papers this one I think there's a process video for this one as well and this one these were the last ones I did to finish up this particular album. 
and there we go so that is the end of that i will link the close to my heart shopping website below um, and my consultant and if you have your own consultant i highly recommend buying their albums and their page protectors if you can afford them i know they're a little bit more expensive but they really are much more sturdy than anything else i can find so um i hope you enjoyed my video today i know i have been a little bit absent in the last little while we have had a lot of things going on uh, including graduation and the end of the school year has been a bit of a struggle for me so i am looking forward to going and spending a week with my grandbabies and then i will be back in full force because you know summers i don't work but i do have some process videos ready to go that i will post in the next week while i am away and I hope you are all um, enjoying the heat and not overheating. Take care, everyone. Bye for now.